choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. All systems are a go. The Little Joe 2 did its job testing the LES, and the Saturn 1 tested the aerodynamics. Now, it is time to stick the big boy engines onto the Saturn 1 rocket and send it up for real this time, and that is exactly what NASA did on February 26th, 1966, just a little under four years until the deadline is up for the United States to put a man on the moon. That morning, a new rocket rolled out of the Vehicle Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center. This mission had new objectives and a new name, AS-201 or Apollo 1A. This would be an unmanned flight to test the many new aspects of the new and improved Saturn 1B. The Saturn 1B is the third rocket designed for the Apollo program. This 141 foot or 43.2 meter tall rocket with a mass of 973,000 pounds when fully fueled could put out 7,100 kilonewtons of thrust. This brand new rocket was different from the original Saturn 1 and that the 1B had an upgraded second stage. This new stage would be the SIVB and would later become the Saturn V's third stage. The Saturn 1B would have two booster stages in total. The first one was known as the SIB and was outfitted with eight Rocketdyne H1 engines. The new second stage would have a single Rocketdyne J2 engine. These would carry an empty payload into low Earth orbit to accomplish this mission. With a brand new rocket, NASA had to perform a test flight, and that's exactly what this mission was. AS-201 would set out to test the propulsion systems of the new SIVB second stage, to test the heat shield of the new Apollo command module, to test the reaction control systems of the command module, to test the ability to keep cabin pressure, and to demonstrate the recovery and launch processes. After months of delays and aborts, on February 26, 1966, the Saturn 1B rolled out onto the launch pad to finally be launched. Then, four seconds before the launch, a problem arose. The pressure in one of the fuel tanks fell below the safe limit. This caused the launch control to abort the mission. Even though it was an easy fix, they would not have been able to fix it in time. Flight simulations were ran, and it would show that the rocket would still work properly, so the flight was resumed. AS-201 lifted off, and the first stage worked perfectly, launching the rocket to 57 kilometers before decoupling, allowing for the brand new SIVB second stage to take over. The second stage took the rocket to a height of 425 kilometers. Then, the command service module, or CSM, separated and continued a little further. The CSM spacecraft performed a burn in space to bring the rocket back to Earth and increase the speed of the spacecraft to test the heat shield, but it also served another function. This burn would stop after 100 seconds and then would restart and continue for another 10. This showed NASA that the AJ-10-137 engine on the CSM could successfully restart in space. The CSM then re-entered Earth's atmosphere, traveling at 8,300 meters per second, and splashed down in the North Atlantic Ocean just 37 minutes after launch. The mission was not without its many problems, though. During the CSM engine burn, the engine would only work properly for 80 seconds, until a break in the oxidizer line allowed helium to mix with oxidizer. Then, an electrical failure caused the spacecraft to lose its steering during re-entry. After that, the measurements that were meant to be taken during re-entry were not able to be taken due to a short circuit. The mission was considered a success, even though the problems prevented them from running it exactly how they would like. The necessary objectives were met, and NASA would improve on this rocket in their next mission, as their next launch would only be a little over four months away.